and I would just like keep bringing bags and she was like why are you bringing bags and then like one day it just like became yeah. apparent that I moved in yeah and then I was just it and she's never left the house ever since Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators in a space where we share our stories on all things queer related. My name is Brie Walker, Brie Logan on all platforms. If you're not listening to this on Apple Podcasts and you're not subscribed, what you're doing, baby, hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, give us a follow. We have some great guests on today. They are TikTok creators, a little bit of West Coast babies. One of them's an East Coast baby. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and they started an LGBTQ plus business out of their home. You can find them at Coming Out Happy Team on TikTok and Coming Out Happy on Instagram. Please welcome Keely and Danny. Woo! Thank Woo! you for having us. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> I love the fact that I was able to get you guys on here. Keely, were you the first one that reached out to me? I kind of forget. <laughs> I always slide in the DM yeah, somewhere. I was so. like, I think so. I thought your TikToks were so funny. And I remember seeing the dad or the grandpa one a long time ago during quarantine. And I remember following you since. And I just think you're hilarious. And I was like, I got I to gotta <laughs> talk to her. So I sent you a message. And I remember the first time we Zoomed, we just went off. Like, we talked for like we two did. hours. We, we really did. Talking. It was so funny. And like, ever since, we've just like, I don't know, we've stayed connected through it all. I see your stuff. And we're just liking each other's <laughs> stuff and staying connected. Yeah. So. You got to. You got to. Yeah. This... Met so many people on TikTok, right? Yeah. I, I will. Because like, I started this podcast so I could meet people. And I was like, it would be great if like people really connected and liked it and I could like start something from this. But like, if not, the best thing that could, could come out of this is the fact that I can meet a new queer person every week. <laughs> totally. That sounds yeah. awesome. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about, because I know that we've talked for a little bit about um, the business and stuff, but I never really learned like the behind the scenes about like how you guys started your business. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'll take that over. Perfect. <laughs> um, the left, so I, I feel like you're the left brain, Danny. You're the logical, yes. you're the operations. <laughs> it's the New York in me too. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm like jumping all over the place and it's just like, yeah, no, I let her take the lead on all that. <laughs> I'm, I'm usually the one coming up with the technical stuff and creating a bunch of different stuff that most people don't see, but I've been a life coach for the last couple of years, ever since I graduated college. Actually, um, I published a book called Coming Out Happy, which was kind of the spark of it all because I struggled with my self-esteem, my sexuality for the longest time, and I needed to be able to help people in some way because I knew that was also a part of my healing process from like everything that I had been through. So I wrote this book in hopes of teaching so many young people how to just feel good about themselves, whether it's with their sexuality or just taking advantage of their life. Like I knew how short life was <laughs> after just struggling with it for so long. So I published that book and a couple of years later, right time, right place, I decided to come up with a community membership because I also realized that while people are struggling with their self-esteem and their confidence, they also need a community, a community to feel like they're accepted and loved also because a lot of people don't have that within their family or their friends in person. So it came from that and it's been incredible ever since it's only been three months since we've been running it, but it's been a lot of fun and we've really helped a lot of people. So in yeah. like that day, I remember like you were just like, I have to create something like quarantine had just hit and we knew that like we weren't going to be able to see people. We like our goal of 2020 was literally making more friends. We're like, Oh gosh, like that's gone now. So what are we going to do? Um, and creating this just played into what we wanted in our life and yeah. what we wanted to do. And I remember the day you were like, we have to create something. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was working her job and I was just finishing my last semester of college. And she's like, I'm going to quit my job. Like, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I was like, what do you mean? You're going to quit your job? Like what? And she was like, yeah, like I, I, it's time. And like that day you just felt like it was, it was just so, it was so deep inside my heart. I was like, I need to continue helping people because I shut it off for a while while the life coaching wasn't really working out so well. And I was like, I, I need to figure this out, you know, and now's the time. And so now we're running it together and it's become a whole different, incredible and beautiful mission of just serving people literally worldwide. It's hitting like 
15, 20 countries already. And it, it, but it didn't start that way because I didn't think that I would be a part of it. I really didn't. I didn't think I would be as involved. I'd never really done like life coaching or anything like that before. And I was still figuring out my own journey. So I was like, I don't, I was just like her biggest fan. I was like, you can yeah. do this. I'm so proud of you. Like, I know you can do this. And I remember the last day um, it was her, she had already given her two weeks. It was her last day. And I went to go meet her for lunch. And she's like, I'm so scared, Keely. I'm so scared. And I, at the time, I was just making fun TikToks. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go home that day. And she was so nervous. She just started the Instagram. We had like a hundred followers, literally a hundred followers, just like friends. Yeah. And so that day after I met with her at lunch, I went home and I was like, I'm going to make a TikTok. So I just literally got on there. I started telling this story about you know, my girlfriend, she was a life coach and she just quit her job today and she's going to do something amazing. I didn't even know what it was. I was like, she's going to do something amazing for the LGBTQ plus community. So go follow at coming out happy on Instagram. And the video got over like 70,000 views. Holy shit. Like it went viral like that day and people started following and she got off work. And what were you thinking? I was like, it was blowing up. Yeah, I was so confused. We, we got thousands of followers on Instagram and it felt so good to be like just validated in the work that I was just working so hard on. But then we had our first launch like shortly after that and it did really well. We had like a hundred people sign up for the community in like two days, yeah. which was, it was really, really was nice crazy. to see. <laughs> we like closed it. Cause we're like, I don't know what yeah, to do. We were just scared. We were like, I don't even know if this is going to be, it's just like, but it, it, it promotes self love and just teaching how powerful you can be when you accept yourself. And when you have, a community yeah so that was a little backstory <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I love that like I love how you had that gut feeling and you were like I'm just gonna jump because it's not an easy thing to do I've had that happen you know a few times and like on one hand it's like you can't go back but on the other hand you don't know what lies ahead of you it's scary but it's the best when yeah you it really it, is take it. <laughs> take it and run you know I think that's just it's so incredible <laughs> yeah, no, I just like I remember that day. It's coming back like full swing. I'm yeah. like, oh my god, it was scary. It but was. It's, yeah, it's so nice to just be able, like, regardless of how scary it is, like, and I've always kind of been this way, but like, I'm always trying to do things that are more unconventional, like every single day. But it's great to just pursue your passions and like when you believe in it and other people are believing it, like, you're just unstoppable. I mean, you know, podcasts, all this good stuff, like. It's amazing what we can all do when we believe in yeah. ourselves. I feel like uncomfortability breeds growth. And, you know, if you're not putting yourself into those uncomfortable situations, like you might find that you're kind of stuck, you know? Like I feel like, and I get DMs about that too, like where people feel like they're stuck. Mm-hmm. And, and especially with like sexuality and coming out, they feel like they're stuck. But like I felt that way too, but I've also felt that way professionally. You know, with, I just feel like I'm stuck. I feel like I'm going nowhere. I'm, like, I don't have any purpose in what I do. Like the day to day is mundane. Like I'm meant for it to do something more, you know, I just like you, but you don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, which is just the whole thing about being in your twenties. I know. Twenties yeah. <laughs> totally. are hard, you know, but I was just thinking like they, they really are all connected with, within each other. Like they are blocks, like there's something that's like making people feel stuck whether it's in their professional life or it's within like their sexuality, like we all have the power to get outside of it and to make ourselves happy in one way or another, whether it's getting a new job or coming out and feeling incredible, like we can all accomplish these things and it's incredible when you do. But But it's it's all about mindset, Yeah, you know, like if you tell yourself that you can't do it and you're not sure and like, Mm -hmm. oh no, like I'm not good enough and like those thoughts come in, it's a totally imposter syndrome, like then you can't and you won't. But when you look at yourself and you know, like, I'm good enough, like, I can do this, I can kill it, and I can create something beautiful and amazing, like, it's incredible, and you become unstoppable. And it only, you know, not everyone is going to take that chance and do it. Like, 2% of people really go and do it, because it's hard. And every day, like, you need support, you need to tell yourself and believe in it, like, there's no plan B, so... Yep. Yeah, it's got to burn good. your life raft. Yes. <laughs> if you're, and that's like a whole metaphor. Like it's yeah. you and a life raft and the island. And it's scary to get off your life raft to swim to the island, but the island might be better for you than the life raft. Yeah. It probably will be better for you than the life raft, but you don't know. But if you have the plan B, which is your life raft, you're, you're not going, it's not going to give you that push to do it. But mm-hmm. if you burn the fucking life raft, 
you have no other choice. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's just better to go through life, like just blindfolding yourself and just trying to like move forward and just saying like, screw the fear, go for whatever it is that you want and you'll accomplish literally anything. Yep. There's just so much fear inside all of us, yeah. but it's, I feel like it's an illusion sometimes, yeah. you know, like we just need to keep taking those steps. I mean, yeah. Fear is a complete illusion, but it's debilitating. It can be yeah. so debilitating and crippling to people's growth and like, and figuring shit out. Right. Because it's like, Oh, well, you know, if I quit my job, like what if I don't find another job? Like what if my savings runs out? Like what if, what if, what if, especially during a pandemic, you know, yeah, serious, cause it's new. It's not even like proven of like what actually is coming next. Yeah. You know, yeah. like what if I make a wrong decision or what if I regret my decision or like, what if coming out isn't what I thought it would be? Or what if I'm not really gay and I do the whole thing for nothing? Compulsory heterosexuality, you know? Yeah. Even coming out, I think it relates to coming out so much. You know, like that fear like that we put inside ourselves and so not coming out for so many years. Like that is a hard thing too. You know, you think that, oh my gosh, like you said, all of those things, you, you have the internalized homophobia and you have that fear of just not doing it. And you're afraid of what others will yeah. think of you and all these mm -hmm. things. And it's like, once you come out, I am the happiest <laughs> I've ever been. Like, oh, and wow. I never thought, like, I didn't even think I could tell my parents. Like I was like, I'll just be like in the closet. I'm just never going to come out. And I never thought I was going to, if you would have told me my younger self, you would have told me that I was going to be you know, teaching people how to come out and I'm like publicly doing it, I would have been yeah. like, you're joking. Like, I'm <laughs> never going to tell anyone this. Like, <laughs> this is a lie. But yeah, now I'm doing it. And it's like crazy how it changes everything for you. I agree too. Like I had wanted to give back to the community for so long, but I didn't have the confidence. I mean, I've only been out, I've only been out a few years. And I remember thinking like, I'm meant to do something. I just don't know what that is yet. And I don't know if I'm capable of doing it just yet. If someone would have told me I'd be making TikToks, you know, where my 10-year-old cousin was making TikToks and she was on Musical.ly before that, someone told me that a pandemic was going to happen. I was going to be making videos from my ring light at 25 and living in a college house so I could save money. That's so funny. You know, like making gay TikToks for the, yeah. for the gay community and then making a podcast about it and then broadcasting it all over my social media. It so, just works out that way, and it's manifestation. And I feel like we talked about law of attraction, Keely, but I swear yeah. to God, it's man, it's law of attraction. Yeah. We totally did, and like I, I believe that we are a hundred percent here for a reason right now, doing this podcast with you. You know, like there's mm -hmm. people that are going to be listening to this, that are listening to this right now. They're hearing us talk, and like they're listening to it for a reason. Every single person. Yeah. Um, is exactly where they're meant to be. And I say this all the time and my, the coming out happy members, they know that I, this is like my saying, but like, it's really helped me with like coming out and internalized homophobia and every single thing that's happened in my life, just knowing and telling myself constantly that I truly, there's truly no mistake in where I am today. Like I would not be doing this if I was not supposed to be doing it. I am supposed to be doing everything that's happening. This pandemic is supposed to be going on right now. Even though like there's bad things, you find the positives, you see what you can learn from it and you can see how we can grow. Um, you know, you created the queer talk during this and like you've been doing TikToks and like there's been so much inspiration through this time. So there's a lot of good yeah. and, and everything that's bad. So I even got an undercut too. I really went for it. <laughs> how do you feel? I feel gayer. It's a bold new look, but we love it. Everybody has to have an undercut at some point, you know? Oh, yeah. You got to try it. I tried yeah. it out. Each year you get a little gayer, I feel. I've heard. I don't know what's after the undercut. Maybe the slit in the eyebrow? Will you do that? I think Maybe. That... I haven't done it. I did it last year. <laughs> did you? But it's grown back, so I don't have it yet. I don't know if I'll do that, but I have the earring. I was going to say, the earring is a good place uh, to start, too. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. What about yeah. the sleeve? I was literally just about to say tattoos is also a pretty big part of it. Oh, it is. I thought you meant your sleeves, like cuffing oh. your sleeves. I was oh, like, no, there I, is I, one I, cuff I, here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is a good me. one, too. They say every lesbian has a rose on their arm. But I don't. I think so. some type of flower, flower. or zodiac uh, sign Yes, is a good sign, yeah. Like, what is your sign? That's a good question to ask everyone. <laughs> I'll give you all three. Uh -oh. Uh, oh, yeah, we I, So because I never was into Zodiacs, I was like the gay that was like, I'm not into Zodiacs, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then I started like going on dates and people were like, what's your co-star? And I was like, I don't fucking have co-star. Like, I'm 
fucking 25. Don't date people that are in, in their early 20s. Don't date 20 year olds. Only 21 year olds. Just don't do it. <laughs> That's just like a trigger warning for you guys. Just, just don't fucking do it. But they were asking me for their co-star. And I was like, that's yeah. fucking stupid. Don't, like, what the... I wasn't... I didn't say it. I wasn't mean about it. I was, like, jokingly mean about it. And I finally kind of got onto it. And my mom's into Zodiacs, which is hilarious. I'm like, you have a gay daughter not into Zodiacs? And you're straight and you are? That's so and so funny. she told me what my rising and my sun and moon. So... I am a Libra sun, mm. your regular sign, and my moon is Scorpio. And my rising is Capricorn. Libra, wow. that's like money, right? No, that's, oh, that's Capricorn. Capricorn. <laughs> that's my right. rising. And then my podcast editor, Elise, hi, Elise, she is a Capricorn. Wow. Sun. Oh, yeah, what a really fun. good team. That's I awesome. Know. We work well together. She's awesome. Uh, yeah, but si- I, I don't know. Signs are just, I feel like they're true. I don't know. But what if you find someone that you really like and it's like a sign that you know is like not compatible, but you really like them? Is it just like if you believe in the sign, you just say no? Or do you say yeah? Love Uh, against all odds. You go for it. Yeah. Danny and I weren't meant to be together. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm a cancer. So I'm like crying a lot. Yeah, I'm crying. I'm sad. No, I'm just kidding. I'm like probably the most happiest person you'll ever see. If you see my TikToks, I'm just like giggling, (laughs) laughing all the time, telling jokes. But Danny's a Leo and Leos are very straightforward. So yeah, no, we work well together. I think we're a good team because Danny's like very straightforward. She's very organized. And then I'm the one that likes to like be creative and put it out there. I'm the the sugar scrubs. Woo! Yeah, we just made rainbow sugar scrubs yesterday. We're always thinking of new ideas. I'm like the one that's like, oh, that'd be cool. And Danny's like, okay, I'm going to go buy them so that we can actually make it. It's a East Coast versus West Coast. She's just chilling. And I'm like, we got stuff to do. Like, yeah. we're from like seven in the morning to like eight at night. We're just cooking up these sugar scrubs and doing all this good stuff. Tie-dye you know? shirts. I think we did that last week. Two weeks yeah. Ago. Just different experiments to have fun and that's promote awesome. gayness is, is really what we're about. Yeah. That's <laughs> and awesome. Just, so yeah. she's the vision, the creativity, but you're the follow through. You come in and you're like, okay, how do we get this? How do we do yeah. this? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. I think you guys are a good team. It sounds like a great yeah. duo. I think so. And, you know, working with your girlfriend is a little confusing at times because not a lot of people are in a relationship with their business partners, I feel <laughs> like. But if it works, then it works and it's great. I feel yeah. like a lot of people are, but they also have husbands and wives too. Ooh. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah, I hear that. A little work oh. romance. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to work together and, and thrive over in California. How do we, how do we, like, if you actually think about it, like, I know we just are doing it all the time. We're living in it. But how do you think we actually, like, manage? Because we're still, like, we actually want to hang out with each other on weekends, too, which is still interesting because <laughs> we spend, like, 24-7 together during the week. But we're like, hey, yeah, like, let's go on a date. We still really enjoy spending time together. I mean, how do you think we, like, manage that or, like, how do we keep it healthy? Versus, yeah, do like, you guys have, like, boundaries and stuff when it comes to, like, professional time and then, like, personal time or anything like that? You know, I think we're we're still really new to, like, working together. So I think we're kind of figuring it out as time keeps going on. But maybe just, like, sh- like there are days where I'll just, like, leave my – because I have two – different phones I like leave my work phone just like completely in the room and just like don't even touch it because I'm usually like immersed in our social media of like connecting with our members so there are just days where I just like won't look at it and we can just focus on whatever it is that we're doing whether it's like hanging out with each other or my siblings or just like just being together you know yeah but like well I think something that we do is we try to take time at night to like catch up and like check in with each other it's really easy to just talk about work all the time because we live in it and it's like going on 24 7 but it's really good when we just put our phones away like lnt which is late night talk so we turn on our (laughs) little light every night um, we just catch up and really yeah. get to talk with each other and it's it's really nice. Yeah. So I think that's one way that we like try to recharge yeah. and reconnect with each other. But well, we're still trying to figure it out, you know? But we yeah. were dating before this, so luckily like we had time to like love each other and not just jump right into all right, let's make YouTube videos like <laughs> just came up like a year after we were dating. So Yeah, I and I wasn't meant to it. it's so interesting because I wasn't really meant to do this with her. Like that wasn't the plan in the first place. But when I graduated college, I like I'd been working for this marketing company for a while and and they offered me a job and they were like, do you want to go? They asked me to move to Arkansas. And I was like, no, <laughs> I declined it. And she was like, do you want to work with me? And I was like, yeah, like I was already kind of doing it. And I was like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's like I chose I chose it because I knew that like when you struggle with something so much, you just want to like change the world. You know, you yeah. want to 
you want to help people. Yeah. I was like, I'm passionate about this. This is purposeful and I want to do this, but it was, it was scary. So I wasn't meant to do this with her. Um, but then it worked when we did it together. So like we knew that yeah. this is for a reason and we always go back to that too. That's so awesome. Yeah. You guys have been dating for a while now, right? Like a, a year or two? Year and two. a half. Not yeah. super long, but awesome. it feels like forever. She moved into my we, place yeah. kind of quickly. <laughs> but don't they all? Like kind of quickly? Oh. Hold on, hold on. You glassed over that. Yeah, no, I think we'll, we'll just, just skip that yeah. part. Never no, <laughs> I need to know this. Is this a U-Haul situation? Is it like a three-day well, or a month? Or like no, no, what, no, no. what we got going on? So like, <laughs> well, sure was okay, if anyone's listening right now, you know when you just know? Like I knew. Like I they saw, all say that they know. No, like I literally I, saw, I, I saw Danny and I was like, I'm literally going to be with her for the rest of my life. And I know that sounds creepy. And I know that's weird, but I just knew. It was creepy. <laughs> it actually was creepy. She was messaging me saying no, I w- <laughs> how badly she wanted to be with me when we didn't even, like, obviously we didn't meet, but, and that's like a classic story. But, like, the first day that we were talking, and I was just, I was showing no, my no, friends. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, this is just too much. I was just like, I really me? think you're cute. Like, I was just really into her. I didn't say that I wanted to marry you all the first day. Don't expose me like that. But uh, we did, like, slowly. So I was finishing my last um, semester or year of college, and I was playing college soccer. And, like, I was coming back and forth between her house. And, like, each time I would come, I would, like, slowly move stuff in. And it was probably, like, three or four Now I have no after. space. <laughs> yeah. And I would just, like, keep bringing bags. And she was like, why are you bringing bags? And then, like, one day, just, like, became apparent uh, that I moved in. Yeah. And then that was just it. And she's never left the house ever since. She's like, what? Uh, you don't like to go out? And I was like, no, not really. <laughs> we, we have so much fun together and, like, truly are just, like, best friends. And yeah. it's great when you can connect with someone like that and they really make you better in every aspect. Like, there's not a day that goes by that I know that I can be lazy or just, like, not be my 100% self because she's always pushing me to, to be yeah. better and we're growing, like, so well together. Um, it's pretty untraditional, though, because, like, it really was a lot of, like, mental work that we both had to kind of, yeah. like, help each other <laughs> with in the beginning. And, like, we didn't rush into it in an emotional way. It was more just, like, a, let's just, like, see how we do together. And, like, she moved in faster. But, like, we really took a lot of time to get to know each other and took a lot of time to decide if, like, we wanted to keep doing this. Like, I've had a lot of bad relationships in my life. And this was the one thing that felt really healthy because we learned how to communicate with each other and I've never done that with anybody else which I think is really important for all LGBTQ plus people to know like healthy relationships can exist but we have to figure them out when it was like strange at the beginning because we were like why does this feel like we're like building a foundation like we truly felt like we were like putting in our heart and soul to like make it work and like not that it was like forced but it was just like we were really like setting boundaries and being so healthy about it and I feel like Maybe when you know it's like the right person, you know, you're on that path and you're and you want to be better and you want to like do all these things that like really try to make it work. So then she <laughs> moved in and then that was it. So yeah. So I guess you are. could <laughs> consider us U-Haul, but that's not the concept we normally talk about. So I'm excited for people that actually know us to hear all of this, Uh-oh. all these juicy <laughs> details. <laughs> yeah, that was juicy. Literally, it was so funny. You guys were like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I moved in and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I knew we were going to get away with that. You were so sly about that. Mm-hmm. Reese quick, Reese quick. I wanted to know the deets. I want to know the tea. I thought it was funny because Danny was just kind of like, she just slowly started putting her stuff. I could just see you. Being like, yeah, I'm just going to leave it here, but, like, I'm going to come back and get it. Or, like, yeah. oh, like, I just, it's just easier. I'm going to come back this next, you know, next yeah. tomorrow, next week. Like, I'll just leave this here. And then your just stuff is just, like, mounting up. And Danny's well, just like, okay. Um, she ran out of space. Yeah. But it was, like, good when she was just, like, she bought an extra toothbrush to, like, keep here. Yeah. But then when she completely threw the other one out and just left hers here, it's like, <laughs> there's no going back. She can't. Yeah, no toothbrush. She burned her life oh. wrap. She burned her to her plan B toothbrush. Exactly. Yeah. And it works when you do that. No it other does. plan B. You just go full force ahead of whatever it is. <laughs> I, know. I know. I felt so bad for my roommate at the time. She was like, Where have you been? And I was like, uh, I've just been gone. But like Danny would come to hang out with me and then I would like go back with her because I just wanted to hang out. Like I, I love being here. But also when you live in San Diego and you're like right by the beach where Danny was, I was like 
this is the best. I was like, I'm living by the water. Like, <laughs> I love it. And I just kind of manifested myself here. Yeah. That's <laughs> so. the power of manifestation. Whether you find a girlfriend or you just do it yourself. Like yeah. I did. I've moved across the country. I've had such a feeling about it. I she only moved here a year that. ago. I just completely picked up from New York and I left because I just felt like I should be here. And then I met her and I was like, oh, it made sense. That's it. <laughs> so were you just tired of New York or like, was it kind of like on impulse? Like I'm just ready for like a clean slate and something new and like a sunny area. I feel like I was just kind of like destined to be here. Like this is the place of like personal development, but I didn't, I didn't really know how much my life would change until I just like took a leap. Like I was living with my parents I was working at coffee shop jobs and like trying to make my life coaching work and I felt really stuck and I knew that I had to change something or it just would keep going every single day, the same routine. So I was just like, you know what, why don't I just take a chance? Like who wouldn't want to live in a sunny place? Like New York is cold, you know, it's just really, really, really cold. So I was just like, let's People just- are mean. Yeah. And you know what? I didn't want any more of that because I wanted to feel good about like myself, my surroundings and People seemed happy over here. Like it was such a nice change because I like finally showed myself that I could be a freaking adult and just go do this thing. Like I, I just pushed myself across the country and I was like, I deserve to I deserve to feel good and to create my own life. I don't believe in like all excuses. Like I just pushed myself and I was like, let's go. It's just the power of you. It's it's endless. It really is. And I feel like time is kind of an illusion when it comes to like manifesting things. Like it might not come at the time you think it'll come, but it's on its way, you know? Like if you think it and you believe it and you're, you know, actively working toward it, there have been so many things that I had thought about that like it took me, like I never thought that I would be making this podcast now off of a TikTok following that I created by making it's a remix videos with like six second videos with my grandpa. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like you just can't plan that shit. And but like, I knew that I wanted queer friends. That was like a main thing. Like I wanted my own group of like queer friends. I knew I wanted to do stuff for the community. I just didn't know how it was going to happen. And it was so frustrating to me not being able to see because like I love to have a plan. Like I like to have a plan. I hate the fact that like a life throws you curveballs and you can only see like 200 feet in front of you. Like you're in a goddamn snowstorm. (laughs) It pisses me off to no end. Can you tell that I'm not like super go with the flow? (laughs) (laughs) It's hard, but it's like the best when you just keep crushing it day by day. Nobody ever expects to be where they are. Like there's just so many amazing things that come with time and whenever it is the right time. Yeah. That's it. Like you were meant to make those videos, to make this podcast and help so many people. But it just had to come at the right time. Quarantine changed a lot of people's lives for worse or for better. Like we're all here in the right moment completely. Never knew we would meet all three of us. I know I had to slide into Bree's DMs. I yeah, had to you may want to stop now. God. <laughs> <laughs> Bree and I, we platonic. Talk. It was platonic. <laughs> and we talk about this a lot too. There can be platonic relationships in the LGBTQ plus community, especially in the lesbian community. Yeah. I think like a lot of people think that it's just like it can't ever be that. And it's really hard in yeah. some relationships. I know you were mentioning a little bit about like toxic relationships, but like it's so good for other lesbians to have other queer friends. That's why we created our community. Yeah, Yeah. like it's really good. Yeah, it's just all about friendship and like, you know, connecting with people. Exactly. And it doesn't always have to start because like everyone says like, oh, like your friends are your exes because like there's not a lot of queer people. So like your exes become your friends or like your hookups or your like fuck buddies become your friends. And like sometimes that's the case. (laughs) I will say it always have to be the case. It's just nice meeting people like in your area or just like even across the country, across the world who just get you like you don't have to explain Mm -hmm. any of these like hard things. They understand what you've been through and like they're just kind of rolling with it. Like it's really nice. I'm sure just like for you, I'm not sure your coming out story specifically, but like just to feel like you can be yourself around other people who just... I'm going to question you. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to give you crap about it. Like, it's just, it's so nice to be in a community full of accepting people. It really is. I have a weird story that relates to that and relates to like the manifesting thing. And that's why it's so crazy. It makes me believe in manifestation so much more because it's such a outlandish story. Like, how could that have ever happened? But like, I had just come out and I had plans to go to Thailand. And so I had already been there twice already. And the first time I wasn't out to anyone but myself. 
And I remember like being on the plane and I was going with my cousin and we were going to Vietnam and we were going to Thailand. And I remember thinking, wow, like, wouldn't it be great to have an experience where I'm like hanging out on the beach and I meet like some other queer women and I end up like hanging out with them. And then like, I end up having like an affair with a beautiful girl or whatever there. And I was like, wow, like that would be amazing. Like that sounds so picturesque, like, (laughs) but that'll never happen. And, you know, like the week went by and, and we went home and then, you know, a year later I lived there for six months Mm -hmm. and the picturesque thing did not happen. Oh no. (laughs) Just wait for it. I was waiting for it. I was waiting. (laughs) But I had been working online and I went a third time and I just went, like I had literally just came out. And I started like kind of dating someone, but it was really new. So it wasn't exclusive or anything like that. And I went to Thailand a third time on my way to a work event in Bali. We stayed at this hostel. My friend and I did. There were so many random queer people there and this random hostel and this random place called Krabby in Thailand. I ended up running into a queer woman who had the same tattoo as me on her back. It was the most validating experience I'd ever had because I'd never been around so many queer women who saw me, like for me, because I was so newly out. They were like, saw me and was like, oh my God, like she's like cute. I like, you know, that kind of thing. And it like caught me off guard. And there was this girl that worked at the hostel and she was this British girl, absolutely beautiful. She was bi, I think. And I had seen her and I'd spent four days there. I was only supposed to spend two days there and I spent four (laughs) days there. It was just this like whirlwind of just being in such an accepting environment and like, you know, you have drinks and you have beautiful scenery, like there's so much going on and I just got swept up in it. And at this time, this was two years prior to when I was like thinking about this first time in Thailand and it happened. It happened two years after in the country that I spent three years going to. I was in such turmoil and there was so much going on and I, and it was like this beacon of hope of being at a place where like I was accepted and people actually, I don't know, like even the men who knew that I was gay still wanted to like, they like wanted to hang out with me, you know, because they actually liked me for me. Like all of these things that I was like worried about, you know, I ended up like being with this like beautiful woman in a beautiful country that I manifested two years ago. That sounds fun. That sounds like an awesome time. Oh my God. And that's why I'm like, manifestation is crazy. Literally come up with anything inside your head and you'll make it happen. And Um, I didn't realize it until after I got back and I was like, oh my God, I manifested that. Like I manifested that two years ago. How was Thailand? Oh, it was awesome. It's my, it's my favorite place on this planet. Like, That's where I want to go, just so you know. So do you want to manifest this all there? <laughs> that's like what I Group told you. let's go. I literally was like, that's where we're going. Once yeah. this is all over, we're going to Thailand. I, I have to tell you something, and I know this is like kind of weird, but I eat Thai food almost every day. I don't that's know awesome. what's wrong with she me. Does. Literally, I switch between Thai and Indian food. I literally, I can't stop. I, I just love it so much. It's, I have to go to Thailand. I'm trying to manifest mm-hmm. it by eating the food every day. Um, so I hope it works. <laughs> so we all go there. there. Flights yeah. are very cheap from California because I've flown from California, like to, they, you don't go straight into Thailand. You have to go to like Korea, you have to go to South Korea, or you fly into um, Japan or Taiwan. And then you fly into it. So it'll be like two legs from from Cali. That's how I know I've been there like three different times. Seriously, um, I know all the spots. I've been almost everywhere there. Like, I love it. I would go back every year if I could. I would get a house there. I have to marry someone to get a house in my name, but. Oh, man. Yeah. You could, maybe you could do that. <laughs> I find the girl with the tattoo. Yeah. yeah. I get to be a dual citizen. She gets to be a dual citizen. I feel like that's a very good compromise. Yeah. That's a good idea. Well, we'll go back (laughs) with you, okay? Sounds good. I I mean, I'm being serious. I don't know. Here too. We literally can travel. We don't stop at anything. You put us (laughs) the test and something, and we'll show you above and beyond. (laughs) Literally. Promise. Anything, like Danny says something, she's like, let's do this. Let's make those sugar scrubs. Does it. Let's go to, she was like, the other day, she was like, let's go to Colorado. The next day, I picked up, drove, what, 15, 16 hours, Colorado. Yeah. Like, anything we, she wants, we do. I want it to. But, well, and they're not bad things. But luckily. just like, yeah, it's like fun, fun, good stuff. things that like, we're living our lives to the fullest. That's what we're really doing. And it's just so short, like you traveling to Thailand. Why, why did you want to travel there? 
You know, it was a place that I had wanted to go back to because I had, I had gone there with my cousin and I was like, I didn't feel like I had the fullest experience. I got the touristy experience, but I just knew that I was going to be back there. I just had this feeling that I was going to be back there for longer and I was going to get an authentic experience, you know? And then a year later I graduated, realized I didn't want to do research, you know, and become, get my doctorate in psychology. I didn't want to do that. And I wanted to travel because I saw that there was this guy that was traveling and, and making money online and he was doing like building an audience and doing affiliate marketing and stuff. And I was like, I can do that. Yeah. Like, if he can do that, I can do that. And so I started a blog and I thought I'll be an ESL teacher. I'll use my degree so I can put it on my resume, but like, I'm really going to use it to get myself out there to then put myself where I can get into a network of people that are doing what I want to do. And that happened. And yeah. I ended up getting into a program and buying a couple courses to teach me how to do it. And I launched it and within three months, like I was making like a, a decent income, you know, it was enough to travel and, and save and stuff like that. And so I stopped doing ESL and I was traveling and yeah, I ended up doing that for a couple years and you know, it, it's, it sucks cause like building a travel brand and not traveling kind of fucked with me cause I had to stop and, um, and I got like a nine to five. So I was like, I can't really have a travel brand and not travel. I feel like a fraud. <laughs> So like, um, you know, like, like two travel days a year and that's, that's about it for most. Yeah. Days. It just, so it wasn't a sustainable brand for me personally, because like long-term travel just wasn't in my plan. It wasn't what I wanted to do long-term is just constantly travel. I wanted to, I think maybe do a month on, maybe travel like a few months out of the year, like on and off, but not like I couldn't do six months. I missed too much of my yeah. family stuff. Like I miss weddings. I miss babies being born. I miss all the holidays, all the stuff. My whole family lives in Cincinnati. So I like, I missed it all uh, and it wasn't yeah. worth it in the end. So, I am not, it's not that I'm married to Cincinnati. Um, it's just that, you know, my whole family does live here, but my parents are probably going to move and retire in the next five to 10 years. So I feel like once that happens, you know, and probably 10 years, like I mean, it sounds shitty, but like my grandparents probably won't be here. So like it would probably be a transition time where I wouldn't feel as like rooted as I do now. But like I do love the city. Like I just I've been living in the city for two years and I feel like I've barely scratched the surface. Cincinnati's so old and like there's just so many cool little neighborhoods and like I feel like I'm not done here just yet. Okay. You know, like I'm just settling in into my adult life as a young professional here. But it doesn't mean that I couldn't see myself elsewhere. Like I would love to live in the West on the West coast. Like I oh. really would. Hungry. Come to San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> you would love it here. Like, and I know you, I mean, just like being, you're more East, right? Or would you say Midwest? I'm Midwest. So like, I feel like it's so different. Like it's just such a different lifestyle. Like everyone's literally outside 24 seven, like just hanging out, like walking to the beach. Like, isn't it so different? Yeah. I don't know. I'm from Colorado, yeah. so I'm, like, kind of used to being, I guess. They were just Mexico. outdoors all the time. I'm not sure how you grew up, but, like, being on the East Coast, like, for fun, we just, like, watched movies and <laughs> sat and inside, and that was it. But everybody's just, like, playing around here, and it's, like, life is happening over here. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I, I did grow up outside, like... I mean, I didn't grow up inside. Like, I was out all the time. Like, if it was rainy or, like, too cold, then I would do stuff. But, like, yeah, I was out a lot. We always had backyards and stuff like that because I lived in the suburbs. But I lived in a very country town, so I had a lot of friends that had a lot of acreage. And they, we would go mudding, and we would – my one friend owned a horse farm, and, like oh, – wow. You know, my one friend was in 4-H and had, like, goats and shit and, like, just a bunch of shit. And, like, so I did grow up adjacent to the country. Mm -hmm. I just, like, lived in the suburbs, but I was, like, country adjacent. So I got to do a lot of that stuff, which was fun. Do you yeah. think you would like to surf and stuff? Oh, yeah. I learned how to surf when I was in Bali. And, it, I mean, oh. I wouldn't say I'm good by any means, but I stood up a few times. Hey, that's, that's what we like to hear. Yeah, yeah I, I love surfing. It just made me sore as fuck. That's why I keep telling Danny, I'm like, I really want to learn. And that's my goal by at least the end of the year to learn how to surf. I bought a wetsuit because, like, you don't rent a wetsuit. So I bought a wetsuit, but <laughs> you, can always rent, you can always rent the board. So I was like, all right, I'm going to teach myself. But it's just like, you don't want to be sore. I'm old. You played soccer. You know, you get it. Yeah, my muscles just, are old. My joints are fucking rough yeah but uh no like in slacklining i started doing slacklining i'm terrible at it 
but like you guys have slack lines and stuff. I've seen like maybe yeah. Venice beach or like something like that. I don't yeah. know, but I've seen them and I'm like, I want to like do that. Like, I just want to like work on it for hours. Like I, this is my thing. This is what I would love to do in my life. I would love to work from like 8 AM to like noon. Nice. <laughs> and then spend the rest okay. of the day doing whatever I want. And that's where I wanted to get my business to a point where I can work four hours a day and delegate the rest of it and have it on automation. That's yeah. our goal too. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up. We're going to do that too. We are going to all do that. And then we'll go to oh, Thailand. Yeah. Then we'll yeah. go. What else do you want to do? I want to hear your future. Man. <laughs> I could give you the micros of like how I want to build this podcast. Yeah. And the things it. that I want to do. So like the listeners, if you guys are listening, this is the stuff that I want to hit the do for you guys. First phase was getting the Patreon up and that's up. And so making sure people have more content. If you guys aren't subscribed to my Patreon, consider subscribing. I'll have the link below. But I do full episodes so you get to see my pretty face, Keely and Danny's pretty faces. <laughs> we do, yeah, full video episodes. And then we do extra full bonus episode. Like the last one was like an hour and a half. So we'll probably have big ones every month. And then I do mini specials where we do little stories about coming out stories, dating stories, sex stories, the good, the bad, the ugly, all that shit. That was like the main thing. My next thing is finding businesses that I can pair with that I can share their message and help connect them to other gay people that would love to use their services and, and buy their products because it, it's something that I believe in and I use. And so that's like the next thing. And then I want to create a clothing line that is LGBTQ. I want it to be different than the stuff that you can, you know, get already simple, yeah. minimalist. And I want it to stand alone as its own thing, as its own brand. That's kind of the next thing probably that'll be on the horizon once I get everything else up and running, creating merch for everybody and then creating a YouTube channel is the yeah. next step. Oh, that's yeah. a lot of good stuff. We're rooting it. you on every step of the way. Thank that's you. Awesome. Yeah, that's my number one goal is to just be here for the community and be able to make a living off of it so that, you know, I can give the pe people what they need and, and then I can also have, you know, the life that I want as well. If I can have a win-win situation, like that's the best case scenario. <laughs> no, definitely. We're like, we're going down the same journey. You know, we're going down the same path of like just wanting to, you know, provide more content, be a resource and like just create a safe space within the community, yeah. you know? Imagine if we all had this. Imagine yeah. if we all had this to look up to. Like I was searching on Tumblr, like trying to figure out how, if there was even other gay people out there, like I didn't even know, you know, I was so yeah. confused. And like, now we have so many amazing people to look up to and it's yeah. insane and incredible. Well, speaking of, of that, you know, if you guys are interested in checking out their membership, I'm going to put the link below. They just have such a great community. And I wanted to share that with, with the listeners here. If you guys are feeling lost or you're looking for other queer people if you guys are feeling stuck, if you guys are feeling down, if you guys are in, in a hole and you feel like you can't get yourself out, these women right here will be able to help you out. I swear to God. <laughs> if I had them when I was trying to come out, it would have been 10 times easier. I shit you not. So <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. Thank you for having us on this podcast. It's not over yet, but <laughs> oh. yes, thank you. Thank it sounded you. like you were going. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Catch you later. <laughs> but we also have an event that we're doing together. <laughs> yes, we do. And we can't wait to see you there. It's gonna yes. be great. when is it? Um September 16th, 16th at 3 30. PM PST and 6.30 yes. PM Eastern time. Yes. We'll be putting all the details in a place for you to reserve your spot so that we know that you're coming. Um, yes. Bri will put that in there. Right, Bri? I will. The link will be below. We're going to do an event with me, Danny, and Keely. It's going to be awesome. There's more details to come on that. Definitely watch out for that. It'll be super fun. Well, we'll do our questions with the queer segment. This is the part of the podcast where we try to answer your questions on life, love, happiness that we probably have no business trying to answer. <laughs> Except for Danny, because she's a life yeah, coach. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! So yeah, if you guys would like to submit a question that could be chosen for this podcast, please send them to questions 
at queertalkpodcast.com to be featured. Email's in the description below. You can put your name, age, wherever you're at in the world. And if you want to stay anonymous, please let me know when you submit so I can keep your identity private. This question comes from Keisha. She's 32 and she's from Pennsylvania. And she says, hi, Brie and guests. I am currently realizing that I'm not straight. I know it took me long enough, right? (laughs) Being a little older than most coming out, I'm having a hard time coming to terms with it as I have been with men my whole life, but I feel like I might be a lesbian or pan. I don't know. I'm not sure about labels. All good, Keisha. If I really am not straight, I'm afraid I won't be able to find community because I didn't come out earlier, like in high school or college. Are there queer places for older gals like me, especially in a small town in Pennsylvania? And will I ever be able to find other gay people? I got to tell you, um, this, question is, <laughs> this question literally was meant to be on this podcast. Just so yeah, you know. Go ahead, Jenny, take it away. We in Coming Out Happy actually have a smaller community for people over 30. So Keisha is not alone, 100%. Yes. We have about 20, 20, 20, 30 people in that chat that literally discuss what it's like coming out over the age of 30, whether they're coming out to their kids, they're breaking up with their husbands or past relationships. Like it gets really, really, really hard when you think that you're alone in that age. Like it's a whole different dimension than just being like 18, 19 and figuring it out because you can just like go to TikTok and see all that good stuff. But like people in their 30s and their 40s and their 50s, they still need community and support and and to know that they're valid through every single part. And they don't have to label themselves, as you said, like too. It's just, we've created that complete space for them to have constant support so they can (laughs) do it and come out whenever they feel like it. It's really interesting that that's like, honestly, the the demographic and the group of people that we've seen a lot, Um, you know, coming out later in life and just realizing that like, they want to choose their happiness and like they, they want to come out, but they're just not sure where to plug in. And it's crazy that we've created that space within coming out happy because originally it was for younger people, but so many people that were over 30 joined and have found that in each other. And it's the most amazing thing to see them all supporting each other, asking each other questions. I know we had a member the other day just come out to her daughter and her daughter was like, when can we get a pride flag? And it was like the sweetest thing. Like, just so amazing to see these stories and these people just living out their true authentic selves even if you're over 30 in your 40s 50s whatever it may be and we have a place for you so Keisha if you're looking for that we're here for you and you can definitely you know check us out and see if it's something you'd be interested in yeah I there is queer community all around you and I it, it might not seem like that it might seem like there's nobody around you because you might be just full of straight people. You might be full of some people who are a little bit uneducated about the LGBTQ plus community. I'm not sure, you know, like your situation, but yeah, you have community here with us. You have community and coming out happy. There's, you know, other places that I've found, obviously TikTok. um, If you are in, and I said this on another podcast, but, and it's a kind of weird, but like if you're in college, well, I guess you're not in college because you're 32, but if you're doing college later, there's like women's studies classes, like things like that. Like sometimes you have to think outside of the box and be like, okay, where are the queer women at? You know, <laughs> yeah. indie co- coffee shops, <laughs> record stores, yeah. Home Depot, <laughs> Home women's Depot. gender studies. Yeah. Lots of good places, but luckily they're not alone. They're never alone. Yeah. Exactly. And I would check with your local LGBTQ plus center. I'm not sure. I would check and see if they have one in in Pittsburgh or in Philly. I'm not sure exactly where you are in Pennsylvania. I know that they do have one in Columbus, Ohio. There's an LGBTQ plus center there that has resources as well. That's a great place to go. Very accepting. But yeah, we got you. And if you're a listener and you're listening to this, we got you. We got you, boo. Sure. So you guys want to answer some questions really fast? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cake or pie? Cake. Pie. What? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Big dogs or small dogs? Small. We got a little death out. <laughs> <laughs> Giving presents or getting presents? Giving. Getting. Getting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I give a lot. <laughs> Is double dipping at a party acceptable? Never. Um, Gross. I do when they're not looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Not during quarantine, though. <laughs> okay, okay. Vans or Birkenstocks? Vans. Vans. Big spoon or little spoon? Little. Big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you think women are complicated? Yes. 
in a beautiful and amazing way. Yeah. So complicated. Nice. <laughs> okay. Dawn or dusk? Dusk. dusk. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> not early risers, I see. No, but we yeah. are, which is why I'm not sure why you said that. Yeah, because I think I thought Dawn was dusk. <laughs> I switched them in my head. No! Okay, I meant dusk. Whatever. We're actually, we get up at five every morning. Okay. Sometimes four. Yeah, that's why we're exhausted. Sorry, these okay. are supposed to be lightning questions. <laughs> yeah, go. Okay. Are, which one of you is the driving gay and the zodiac gay? I'm zodiac and driving. <laughs> 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 Doing everything, talking about the universe. Favorite queer movie? Blue is the warmest color. Awful, uh, but great. What's yours, Keely? Loving Annabelle. <laughs> Ooh, okay. You like the teacher-student dynamic. Yeah. I see you. I fucking see you, you over really there. Good. If you could go back to a time period, which one would you choose and why? I would go back to college because it was when I was like first discovering myself and it was a lot of fun to like have a lot of like first times feeling like I could be myself. I would go back to when I first met you, Danny, because that was oh. the best day ever. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Thank you. I would go back. No, honestly, I would go back because I feel like I've changed so much. Like, I would want to go back and, like, be, I don't know, everything worked out. But I would want to, like, be who I am now when we first started dating. That's that was deep. adorable. <laughs> I'm about to puke rainbows. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on to this podcast. Literally, that was so much fun. If you guys want to check out more about Keely and Danny, you can check them out at Coming Out Happy Team on TikTok and at Coming Out Happy on Instagram. As always, you can find me on all platforms at Brie Logan. If you guys enjoyed this episode, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, give us a follow on Spotify and leave us a little rating so we can see more queer people just like you. That's it for this episode, my queers. Thank you for listening and subscribing. Be you, be queer, stay safe, and we will see you on the next episode.